Hey folks, it's Dag. So this is going to be the final report on the crash of my MSL. I've done a bunch of research and really dug into things to try to really understand the accident a little bit better and what I would do different in the future and what I would, you know, recommend people just to consider. Um, you know, this could have turned out a lot worse, but it didn't. So if you don't know the MSL2, basically it's uh, my own design. I spent about a year designing it in CAD and did a bunch of 3D stuff and then about two years building it. It's 188 inch wing, about 61 pounds, had about 7,000 watts uh, that would fly great on and um, had a whole bunch of flights. And uh, a lot of people don't realize how big this, this aircraft was. It was an an awesome flying airplane at 61 pounds. It had a wing loading or a cube wing loading, <clears throat> excuse me, very much in between a glider and a sport plane. It definitely was not a really, really heavy plane in any way. It probably could have been a hundred pounds more and still flown uh, with that wing loading. So if you don't know the whole story, you'll have to go back and watch the original crash report. But basically the uh, airplane had an onboard fire that took out my receiver. In this video, you can see I was starting to turn away from the flight line. But then once the radio was dead, it slowly turned to the right and it impacted the ground. And I want to talk about this wing flex you see there in a minute. So the fire was pretty hot that was inside it. You can see the damage to the bottom of the engine uh cylinders or the uh, jugs there from it impacting the ground. Now, those are 3D printed, you know, dummy radial engine there. The left, the right landing gear left in this picture here is actually cocked out quite a bit. So you can see that later in the video. So really what caused the entire accident, <clears throat> excuse me, was an onboard fire of the electronic speed control that melted the receiver wires. I've gotten a lot of people reaching out to me that didn't watch the first crashed video and understand that this was not an ESC uh, failing in, in it taking out the signal to my receiver. It was a fire by the ESC that melted the, the wires that go from my throttle to the receiver. Here you can see a little bit different picture. The ESC used to live right there in between uh, the second row jugs right there. And the fire was intense, I mean, was intense enough that it melted the insulation on the wire, bringing into contact the signal and ground or the positive and ground. Again, this ESC did not have an onboard BEC, so it did not need to have the red wire removed on the receiver that went back to my throttle channel on my radio. I've gotten, again, a bunch of emails, a bunch of private messages, and even people posting on YouTube information that proves they never watched the original crash video because I detail very, very clearly that there was no BEC on the ESC, the electronic speed control. And here, folks, is actually the mount that the ESC is hanging on and the, the fire or when the ESC shorted out from going out of timing, which I cover in a crash video, the original crash video, was intense enough to melt those 10 gauge wires. So there was a lot of heat and a lot of fire. Now, I want to break down my control system again because this is another thing that confused people. And people, I'm trying to make this very clear. You've got to pay attention and understand what I'm talking about here before you start telling me what went wrong where you're completely wrong. So essentially, folks, there were two redundant batteries for the receiver going through an Elite T70. I misspoke in my first video saying that was a T30, it's a T70. So it picks the best battery to keep the receiver always powered. There, remember, there's no BEC on the ESC that's powering my receiver. There's two independent batteries. Then there's two batteries for the servo systems that are S-Bus, and they were separated out by their own independent BECs that powered all of my servos. So in theory, if one battery or one BEC went bad, I still had control of at least one aileron and the elevator or one of the brakes or both of the brakes. Um, another thing that was confusing, I think, for people to understand is that this was probably a one in a million chance. If I redid this airplane today, I would not change hardly anything except that wire that runs from the ESC. I would have that come back to its own independent receiver or have it come back to the SBD-1, which is the decoder for S-code, I mean S-bus to the normal servo uh, type communication. That way, if that wire would have melted, it only would have taken out 
one of the servo batteries or that system on one side of the airplane, I still would have had complete control. So in the future, I'm either going to have a second receiver or I'm going to run that throttle wire through one of my SPD-1s. That way, if it melts together, all it does is take out one half of the airplane. Now, again, I get a lot of people that are just not watching the video saying that you should never fly an ESC that has a BEC without having a secondary battery for your receiver. I actually had two redundant batteries for my receiver. Okay, two redundant batteries for the onboard systems, including the brakes. And it, this was just a million to one. What, what are the chances an ESC would catch on fire and actually melt these wires together? I can't find anybody that's ever happened to, and it, it's the first time it's ever happened to me. Now, I don't know what caused the ESC to actually go bad. In the crash video, I explained it kept going out of timing. On a, you know, basically a uh, ESC that can handle 300 amps going to a motor that can hold 10,000 watts, nothing was really being overrun. Nothing was really being pushed that hard. But we'll never know why the ESC did what it did because it's, it's toast. It's gone. Now, I want to show you here another thing that's a million to one chance. The impact we have here, watch how much this wing flexes. The fact that my carbon fiber spar right here did not break is just a million to one. I mean, I don't know how many degrees of deflection there is, but it is ginormous. And the fact that the landing gear survived that impact are a million to one. So, you know, when I think about, you know, the ESC catching on fire, I think about it surviving the ground because I built the landing gear too strong. I mean, I built this like full scale landing gear. It's a uh, 41, uh, 4130 chromoly steel that I TIG welded myself and it's super light, but it's a lot stronger than I ever thought it would be. I never thought with the way the plane was coming down that it would survive hitting the ground. I thought the plane was going to be toast when it hit the ground. The fact that it jumped back off the ground and then kept rolling, of course, I had no radio, so I had no brakes, was really, um, I mean, it was really concerning to me. It, it, for, folks, this was the perfect storm. The more I did research into it and talked to a whole bunch of my other pals and did some testing on the RX system. So here you can see the right landing gear or left in this picture is really tweaked out there. You can see the damage to the jugs that hit the ground. What are the chances of a plane this big hitting the ground that hard and surviving it? Um, it's crazy. Now, here's the bungees. If you dig around inside these bungees, you can find all kinds of the little rubber bands that are ripped and coming out of it. So I actually want to start closing this down, folks, because I just wanted to do a final report on it. And it's a million to one that those wires melting together brought this plane down. Um, any other fire, any other place in the airplane, I would have had control at least to land it safely and let it burn in the runway. Because that's ultimately what I thought was happening, folks. Now, I've had a couple of people say it was crazy I was flying this airplane with some of the problems I was having. The worst thing I thought I would have was a dead stick, and I was keeping it away from people because of that. So if it did fail and I had a dead stick, I'd land it. I never ever thought in the, my wildest dreams that I, with all the redundancy I had built into this, that I could actually lose control of the radio. So... A little bit about the MSL and its future. It just needs new wings. The fuselage needs a good inspection, but the plane will fly again. It's just, it's, it's probably going to be middle of next year or maybe the end of 2025 before I really have the time and the funds to build the new wings, but the uh, airplane will fly again. So basically I want to close folks with some flying of the plane and uh, just, you know, what it looked like at SEF before it crashed. So thanks everybody. Uh, I'll just let you watch the plane here, and um, please like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Take care and rock on, everybody. Bye-bye.